Good morning. Uh, today is a very special day for me. I'm probably going to get emotional. I've uh, been feeling an incredible amount of gratitude all morning. Um, in fact, I even woke and heard while I was in our bunk my father's voice saying to me what he said every day on this day, every year. Uh, he would call me and he would say, I love my E. He called me E. And uh, this is the day that 33 years ago, I got sober from drugs and alcohol. And it was a radical work of God after five drug treatment centers and some real deep struggle with addiction. So we're in, of all places, Minneapolis, Minnesota, which is the place where I went to treatment. And completely randomly, um, this concert that we're playing tonight is the first concert that we've ever done in Minneapolis. It just happened to be on May the 10th. I had nothing to do with that. When I saw it come up on my phone, I got emotional again. This was several months ago and I realized that on this day, God orchestrated it, that we would be in the very place to go back after 33 years. I've only been here one time since then was for a quick radio thing. And just being here, I am like, my heart is about to burst with joy. So we're gonna go on a little adventure and show some of the places where God did some incredible things in my life. Let's go. Yeah, I was just thinking like 33 years. I want to think about the biblical significance of that number. You know, that's the time on earth that it took Jesus to accomplish saving the world and living as a man and then giving the ultimate sacrifice of his, his body and, and then coming back and going home. And I think about that <laughs> 33 otherwise it doesn't really sound like that significant of a number you know sometimes a decade or whatever these markers but for me when I know and I think about that it was Jesus that saved me pulled me out of the pit of addiction when I was I mean I was dead to the world I was so close to death it was amazing and he he really pulled me out of the grave kind of crazy thing when I moved here and went to treatment I was convinced that music was like the thing that had led me into drugs in some ways it really was so I put down my guitar for two years I did not play one note no, nothing on the piano had nothing to do with music and I really thought I might be done with music for my whole life so the fact that God brought that back is just I, honestly it's kind of a miracle in my heart though he restored that and I'll tell you more about that story in a bit so this building coming up, it's somewhat brick and somewhat, I guess, stucco or something right here. Right. Progress Valley. Yeah, Progress Valley. 3033 Garfield Avenue. Man, it's going to be cool. So this, is, this is Eric. I got to meet him last time I was here. Hello. We were in town for a radio thing, and I called. And this place was under construction, but there are actually guys in here now. There are. But they're out. Yep, they're out of group right now. Really important to protect people's anonymity. and. It uh, is. So, yeah. It go, is go indeed. Go you want to go in? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Come on Same. in. This is so cool. So guys are actually staying here now, but I think this is was my acting mean, 33 years ago. I'm pretty sure this is my actual room yeah. where I stayed. Yeah, my first time through, this was my bed right Me here. Me too, bro. Me too. Yeah. That'll be my bed right That's there. Awesome. And uh, yep, little kitchen area, shower, bathroom, back around the way. Yeah. I mean, this place totally changed my life. Like I was saying, just learning how to live in and out of society it's one thing to go away and you know get sober but then to actually figure out how to plug back into the stress and the pressures of just dealing with people they can be extremely yeah. difficult and triggering yeah. this, this place, is the easy part yeah yeah this yeah. is the easy part yeah for sure so anyway super thankful man hey Thank pleasure you. is all mine this building right here 3300 colfax that's when I moved out of Progress Valley. That's literally where I lived. And you see, my, my apartment was right above that sign. That's my, that was my window. So this, this place has been built up a bit now, and it's nicer than when I was here. Um, I remember there was a drug dealer who lived down the, the hall from me. And so my roommate and I 
that we moved out of this halfway house, came here to get sober, and keep, you know, try further to plug into society. One night, I'm in there by myself, and all of a sudden, I hear this huge, like, glass crash. And there is this guy, I guess he's some junkie that had literally was trying to break in to this drug dealer. So he took a brick and smashed it through this front window. And it was just, it was always kind of edgy around here. So I realized at that time, I probably want to move away and get to a safer place. But anyway, we'll go take a peek inside. Yeah, so you can see my, my apartment door was that first one up there on the left. Kind of wild. And this is the glass. This is the glass that had a brick thrown through it. It was all shattered and open. So every morning at 4.30 a.m. I would get on the bus and it would take me down to the sandwich and muffin shop and the bus would come right over here on that corner. So the very first year I was here, October of 91, it snowed on Halloween 36 plus inches. It was absolutely, I mean, it's like a record. Even Minnesotans talk about it and it snows a lot here. It was nuts and the city bus showed up literally the next day at like three minutes late and it's on this road so much snow you cannot even imagine it and the bus takes off and starts fishtailing just basically slides down the road and keeps going I was like this place is crazy anyway they did end up closing the uh, the cafe that day and letting us off work early but pretty fun memory all right so I'm really excited right now we're getting very close to the place where I got reintroduced to Jesus and recommitted my life to him in a very profound way. It's called De Montreville. It's a, a silent retreat place that's been here for 80 years. Men have come here and they have these three and four day retreats where you literally go and don't say a word, uh, including meals. You're sitting down with total strangers. All you hear is forks clanging. And it's, it's really amazing, but it's a beautiful place. There's, probably a retreat going on so I want to be respectful and sensitive to that but it's right up here so so this is De Montreville. it is a Jesuit retreat place I'm not Catholic not Jesuit but Jesus met me here in a profound way I was hungry and he was willing and here we are 33 years later glory to God so I got reintroduced to Jesus here and recommitted my life to him in a powerful way. I'd really, through all the drugs and alcohol, I'd run so far from God, I didn't know if I believed anymore. And it was here that he showed me that he was indeed the God of the heavens. The God of my childhood was real, that it was all real and it became so true to me. There's a tree up here. I hope we can find it. I mean, this is 33 years ago, so it may not even still be here. But when I picked out this shirt this morning, it was the top one on my thing. And I was like, oh my gosh, child of love. Y'all, my biggest struggle in life is believing that I'm lovable. And I've really fought that. That's what I was going for when I ran after drugs or all, all kind of other things, just trying to feel a sense of belonging and love. And the beautiful thing is God showed me this tree. And ever since then, I see heart leaves all over the place on ground while I'm walking. I'll park next to a heart tree, not even knowing it. And it's just one way of God saying to me, I love you and you're lovable. And I sense that in my spirit. And I can, I've can i learned to love myself. And that's when one of the tremendous gifts that sobriety has given me. So let's go see if we can find it. So you see this kind of rust colored tree down there? And then beyond it, way down there, there's a big green tree. That tree, I can't remember the name of it. It's, uh, golly. I can't remember the name of the tree, but it's got heart-shaped leaves on it. And I still have the heart leaf that I picked from that tree in my journal from 33 years ago. And it's like in pristine shape. It's so awesome. It really means a lot to me because it just reminds me of sitting under that tree, which was way, way, way smaller. At the time, it was like a little tiny tree they had just planted maybe a few years before. And yeah, it just still reminds me to this day that I am loved by God and I'm lovable. Yeah, so we're here at the Mall of America. I was here the very year this place was built, which is nuts to think about. 33 years ago, one of the most significant things in my entire life happened here, so I wanna go talk about it. 
so basically, I went to see this movie alive. Like I said, it was a very intense movie. Men trying to survive, having to resort to the ultimate unthinkable thing of eating one another to survive this crazy circumstance of their flight. And in the middle of that thing, I, my heart started pounding so hard I could not figure out what was happening. I thought I was having a heart attack. You have to understand at this time, nobody talked about anxiety, depression, panic attacks, like that was a no-no. You know, if somebody ever talked about stuff like that, they'd send them off to the loony bin and, you know, forget about them. I'm so thankful that today, nowadays, there's so many uh, resources to help people who are dealing with anxiety. But at that time, I had no idea. It started a, basically a cycle where I went through a series of 15 different doctors trying to diagnose what was going on with me. It was anxiety. And why? Because I had numbed myself for all those years with drugs and alcohol. I didn't feel anything. I didn't know what it was like to feel real feelings. So once I removed the drugs and alcohol, all of a sudden I had this new issue that was welling up inside of me. It was all this stored trauma. And it really about took me out. I mean, it was there were days where I thought, God, I cannot keep on going like this. And I'm so thankful to be standing here in this place today after being medicated for a decade just to deal with the panic and anxiety. I couldn't even go out to malls, go out in public. Like, life really shut down for me. And today, I'm not on medication for that, and I have experienced so much healing in my life. Anxiety will still try to come up in my life here and there, but it doesn't have the power that it used to, and I know what it is. I'm like, oh, and I've learned the tools. So I'm very thankful uh, for the gift of sobriety and all that God's taught me in my life to be able to deal with these things. So I am so thankful to be in this place right now and uh, be able to say that. It's a huge victory in my life. What's happening, it's Ed. If you've been following the story, you know, by the grace of God, I got to be sober 33 years ago. We celebrated that on May the 10th. Recorded an album, new EP, it's called 33, and hope you check it out. But I just want to share some of the co coincidences that have been happening that have just blown my mind. So I go to Minneapolis, we do the concert there. Throughout the day, I went to some different places that were really important to me. The first was my halfway house. So I get there, this is 33 years ago that I went there, and this place is called Progress Valley. First thing I see that the address is 3033. Here's me out there, 33. Next is the apartment that I moved into after that was on 33rd and Colfax Avenue. Keep in mind that we had never done a concert in Minneapolis. They, they scheduled this without us even knowing, so all this just happened. And so this is my son and I standing outside. I lived in that apartment when I was first sober. 3300 Colfax Avenue. After this, we went to Mexico to celebrate a little bit, and this guy, who was just incredible, he was a chef that we hired for the night as one last hurrah as a family before we have our first grandkid. He's, it was his birthday the night he cooked for us. I was like, man, you're cooking for us on your birthday? I said, What's your, what, how old are you? He said, 33. Could not believe it. Then, flying home, gate 33, Nashville, I filled up my car. I've never seen this before. It just automatically shut up on 33 gallons. This is my buddy, Sean Moffat. We went to Vegas where they put us on the 33rd floor. We got to go see uh, the Grateful Dead. Crazy story, last time I saw the Grateful Dead, I was not sober and I thank God that I got to see them with a clean heart, clean mind and with, with one of my dearest friends in life. Incredible. And then one of the coolest last things, so, Katie and Nicole, we were playing up at Life Fest. She's got on this shirt, and I was like, Katie, what is happening? This was just you know, a few weeks ago in the spirit of you know, all this season that God's been doing. And I was like, 33, why do you have that shirt on? She goes, I don't know, just like the jersey. And it's just so cool how God has continued to bring this number up to remind me that that is the age that Jesus was when he gave his life for me and for all of us, that we could have the power to break through the hard things in life. And I'm so thankful that he allowed me to get sober all that time ago. If you're struggling, man, there's hope for you. I pray that uh, God would give you the strength that you need to fight the battles that you need. I know he has for me.